I tell you, the uh, music's good at Uchi Pines, isn't it? That's because God is good. How often? All the time. Now, before I pray, Paul, from time to time, was cross-eyed. Now, what do you call that when one eye goes that way and one eye goes that way? Wall-eyed? What do you call that? Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever that, whatever that means. You know, I thank God for doctors, don't you? I praise the Lord. Isn't, that good? Isn't it nice to have a nice doctor in the house? <laughs> but I also thank God that the health message is so simple. I thank God for Loma Linda. But I'm glad for the Bible. And if you don't have Loma Linda and you have the Bible, you'll have the health message. I praise the Lord for uh, Seventh-day Adventist physicians doing God's ministry. Whatever that word you use, the eyes go like that. From time to time, Paul's eyes did that. One place he did that, and I'm going to pray, but I'm going to size things up first. Paul was able to look at the law with one eye and with himself look at himself. He saw the law and he saw himself. So when he got his little pencil there and began to write 2 Corinthians 4, 6, and 7, First, the law, and then himself. He's referring back to Genesis 1, verse 3. Let there be light, and there was light. For God who commanded, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. I wonder what he's going to do with that light. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Where? In the face of Jesus Christ. That is how you have, uh, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart. Because Christ shines into your heart. His face to your heart. That's the law. Verse 7, we have this treasure in, that's us, earthen vessels. And so, one plus one equals two. That the excellency of the power might be of who? God and not of who? Man, we've got no power apart from Him. Would you agree? Now it's time to pray. Oh, one more. All right, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Isaiah 60 verse 1. I forgot about us. That's the law. Paul has three eyes. The law, <laughs> himself, and then us. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon the, verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come. That's my subject this morning. I forgot the subject, the coming of the Gentiles. <laughs> All right, our Father in heaven, thankful this morning that the Gentiles will come if the condition, we arise and we shine, the world is in darkness, gross darkness covered the people. But help us this morning to arise and shine, for thy light has come. Malachi 4.2, and the Son of Righteousness, I pray in the wellness center we call a church this morning, will arise with healing in his wings, for I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, Martin Luther, by the way, the, uh, all those little scripture songs, I want to read you a quote from Martin Luther. Was Martin Luther married? Yeah, he was. And this is what he said. <laughs> I really like this. Let the wife make the husband glad to come home. Isn't that right? And let him make the wife sorry to see him leave. True or false? Genesis 2, 24. Man shall leave his mother, cleave unto his wife. These two shall become what? One flesh. Should a man's heart kind of tear and break when he leaves his wife? No, thank you. Yes. I mean, that's based on what Martin Luther said. Isn't that right? Yeah. Little book, one of my favorite books, Evidence Home, page 15. Let home be a little heaven. Now, you know that too, right? Home should be a heaven. We had a school. There was a, man named, a young guy named Cliff, 16-year-old Cliff. It was a one-month medical missionary school. Cliff was sitting there one day. I read that reference in class. One o'clock. I said, well, time to end class. I'll pray I'll go home. Cliff said, where are you going? Going home. Where are you going? Oh, going where? Heaven. 
Because when I walk into my home, it should be like a little heaven. So when I leave that place, I kind of feel like I'm leaving what? Heaven. On Wednesday. What is today anyway? Wednesday. A week from today, I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to Kenya, Africa, East Africa. Up in the northern part, there's a place called K-A-K-U-M-A, Kukuma. Anybody ever heard of that? Have you? Yeah, it's a, started up in the deserts up in the northwest. It's a Sudanese war refugee camp. But now they've got about nine countries sending refugees into there. 180,000 people. It's 180,000 people. Dear friends, there's a whole lot of Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters in that refugee camp. And they want a health evangelism school. <laughs> Isn't that something? Those people are blankless. Starts with an H. Homeless. It's homeless. Now, the best home on the earth. Ah, now we're ready. And uh, Genesis 12, verse 1. I'm not going to quote Genesis 12, verse 1. Get ye out of your fathers. You know, that this, this Abraham, the call to come out. Let me put Genesis 12, verse 1. Take those 25 words and put it into two. Genesis 12, verse 1. God looked at Abraham and he said, leave home. Isn't home good? Do you want to leave? There's only one thing bad about you, she pines. Let me tell you what it is. My wife's not here. No, my wife's not here. <laughs> my wife's not here. I call her. She calls me. My wife told me the other day, she said, you know, we're getting older. She said, I'll take care of you if I have one breath left in me. Isn't that nice? I'm not going to sit and talk about my wife for hours, but God gave me a good wife. And when I leave her, these two shall become one flesh. When you cut that, it's really, it hurts. I want to go there, but I don't want to leave her. Now, for Jesus, it was easy in a sense because the her and the there were in the same place here. Would you agree? Yeah, you the her. Husbands, love your wives, Ephesians 5.25, as Christ loved the church. Abraham, I want you to leave home. The last part of Genesis 12.2 tells you where Abraham was going. Where was he going? Answer, he didn't know. <laughs> we call that blankless, homeless. So what Abraham did, Hebrews 11 verse 10, he kind of geared up, right? Hebrews 11 verse 10, he looked for a city that hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Last night, uh, uh, Hebrews 12, 22, the heavenly Jerusalem. That's the only city that hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's what Abraham was looking for. Well, Abraham, where's your home? Hebrews 11 verse 13, I am a stranger and a pilgrim. I have no home on this earth. And I say this from my heart. I, I don't have a home. I feel as at home here as I do at Butler Creek or anywhere else. But I have a wife. And where my wife is, there is my home. Did I say that or did Jesus say that? Say that? Both. Did he find heaven not a place to be desired as long as we were lost? Yes. This heaven is just no longer, it feels like home. So Jesus came down here to be home with us. Where are the verses that say that? John 17, 22. They may be one, even as we are one. John 17, 24. They may be with me where I am. That's my home. That's my home. Christ came down, He came home. He's going to come, well, that's, 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 a, that's a whole different subject. That's the subject this morning, Abraham. Now, Abraham was quite a man, isn't that true? Oh, let, 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 let Paul, medical mission, always like that. Let's talk about health for a moment. Were there contagious diseases in the Old Testament? Leviticus 13, 45, and 46. Were there contagious diseases in the Old Testament? And name one. Leprosy. Were there doctors in the Old Testament? Because if you say yes, I say name one. And you can't. In the Old Testament, were there doctors? Name one. Come on, no. 
or, or name one. You can't. So if I had leprosy, I don't think you can. If I had leprosy, who checks me out? Who does the exam? Who makes a diagnosis? Who? The priest. That's the priest, right? It's a priest. Go, uh, Luke 17, go and show yourself unto the priest. You go to the priest. He sent you out. He can bring you back. Jesus, right? He's the priest. He sent you out. He can bring you back. So in uh, Leviticus 13, 45, it tells you in him the plague of leprosy, and it tells you what the priest does to you. He examines you. If he finds you to be leprous, what does he do? Verse 46, 45 and 46, 13 Leviticus. What does he do? He sends you outside the camp. I see all of you. I'm outside the camp. You're inside the camp. You look at me. I yell what? Unclean, unclean. And instead of seeing your faces, I see the backs of your head as you flee. Verse 46. And he shall dwell. How? It starts with an A. Alone. Is it tough to be lonely? Two questions. Population density in the United States. Manhattan takes the cake. Can you be in the middle of Manhattan and be all alone? Better question. Can you be in Uchi Pines and be feel all alone? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Come on. I've been in this work 25 years. Yes, you can. I was the personnel director at Wildwood from 93 to 96. When somebody quit, they came to my office. Rarely did anybody quit Wildwood, but when they did, the number one cause of people quitting Wildwood was, I'm lonely. I didn't understand it then, but now I understand it. Proximity of people does not make somebody feel engaged in family. Would you agree? Yeah. So back to Abraham. Sorry, I got kind of carried away. <laughs> I got all carried off on a tangent there. Got homesick. <laughs> I want to think about home. So, uh, yeah, yeah, God's good, isn't he? You know, these two ladies here are real encouragement to me because they, they respond, they laugh, you know. <laughs> Isn't it great? Can we say amen for our, lady, our, our friends from Virginia? I say praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord for our friends from Virginia. Praise the Lord for Rita. Wait, somebody say amen for Rita? How about Snapper back here? Somebody say praise the Lord for Snapper? Yeah. How about, uh, how about uh, do, 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 Courtney? I had breakfast with Courtney this morning. Where is he at? Amen for Courtney, right? Yeah, there he is. God just rolls these people in here from all over the place. Isn't that great? Yeah, he's trying to put together a family here at Uchi Pines and at Butler Creek and in this world. Because, why? Now, back to Abraham. Matthew 8, verse 11. Many shall, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah 60, 1, 2, and 3. At Daniel, uh, Matthew 8, verse 11. Many shall come from the east and the west. It doesn't say north and south. I add that in. Is that okay? Many shall come from the east and the west and the north and south and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where? In the kingdom of heaven. Are they all going to be Jews? Oh, whoa, 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 what was that? Depends. That's a good safe answer. That's a safe answer. It depends. <laughs> so that's, that's our subject this morning. Yeah. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what we're going to study. Yeah. In order to sit down in the kingdom of God, you've got to have a father, and his name's got to be Abraham. I mean, we've got a father in heaven, but we've got a father of the faithful. Now, we take that and we give study. So, Genesis 18, verse 19. It's written about Abraham. I know him. He will what? Command his, yeah, his children, his household after me. What's he going to keep? The way of the Lord. Did Abraham, was Abraham quite a guy? Yeah, because Abraham, the Lord would say something, he would say something to Abraham. The Lord would say, well, Abraham, Abraham would say, yes, I'd like you to do this. Romans 4, verse 3, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. That is righteousness by what? Not in Abraham, but in Christ. But if you ever see Christ, you'll have righteousness by faith. And Abraham is a symbol of righteousness by faith. That man, righteous by faith. Genesis 12, verse 1, leave home. Abraham said what? I'm gone. <laughs> Where? God said, I'm not telling you. He said, I'm still gone. <laughs> right? And he started walking. And he did. Where was he going? I'm not sure. 
But he went. He said, I guess God will tell me when I need to know. I was in the army. It was a need to know basis. By the way, I heard the machine guns. Dashman told me that, you know, the machine guns, you may hear them every now and then. I didn't really believe them. <laughs> Yesterday, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I thought, man, they're over there playing war. You know, 1975, I was at Fort Benning playing war. God took me out of that war and brought me into Revelation 12, 17. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with you eat your pines. <laughs> you eat your pines. I just transferred because over there it's fake bullets, but over here what? It's real. Isn't it true? Yeah. There's a roaring line over here that's not over there. God wants to get me out of that camp put me in this one. And He did. Isn't God good? Traded me from the U.S. Army to the heavenly army yeah god's good he's a great recruiter the army recruiter tells you a whole lot of lies to get you to sign the line god is like gideon's army he gives you all the reasons to go home and then he invites you to enlist isn't god good yeah you don't have to come into god's army with your eyes closed the lord said i want you to arise and shine here's the contract and this is what we say at butler creek i don't know how it works at uchi pines but this is what happens at Butler Creek. Somebody calls me up about staff opportunities. I say, my dear brother or sister, don't you even think about coming here unless God has called you here. And then don't you think about leaving unless God has called you away. We don't need employment contracts. We don't need paper trails that lead to a lockdown in the staff. We need somebody governed by the Spirit of God. That was Abraham. That's how you keep a staff. Well, give them a cell phone, an office, a little more money, a title, housing. <laughs> that doesn't, that gets, that gets, I don't know what that catch is, but that's not the kind of fish I'm after. I'm looking for somebody that has one thing in mind, a city that hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And then we're homeward bound. Until then, we're just going to be churning our wheels, chasing our tail, and going nowhere. Now, Abraham, Genesis 12, 1, Genesis 18, 19. Now, for the big one, Genesis, 10, Genesis 17, 10, and 11. We're just going through to get up to Abraham to get to ourselves as we finish. Genesis 17, 10, and 11. The Lord walked up to Abraham, gave him a butcher knife, and said what? No, he said cut it off. That's right, 17, 10, and 11. Cut it right off, Abraham. There's the knife. A man would never think of circumcising himself, would he? Come on, would he? Is that, no, is that something a man would think of? You men, is that something we would invent? No way. That's the last thing on my list. And the Lord said, Abraham? Now, verse 11 tells you why. Abraham, here, yeah, what do I do with it? <laughs> what do I, what? I, what? And God said, I mean business. What did Abraham say? You're in the army now, and I mean God's army. Abraham said what? Yes, sir. Now, we always say to ourselves, by the way, Genesis, uh, Romans 2, 28, 21 to Romans 2, 28, 29 next. That explains it. Paul, one eye on Abraham, one eye on the law. And he says, this is it. Not the letter in the Spirit. Last part of Genesis, uh, Romans 2.29. Let me stop and define the letter in the Spirit. Are they different? The letter of the law and the Spirit of the law. Here's the letter of the law. Seventh commandment, not to commit adultery. A man can know that and still commit adultery. That's the letter of the law. Doesn't mean you keep it. Psalms 40 verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is where? Hebrews 10.16, the new covenant. He'll write it where? In our minds. That's to know it and to... Love it to do it in our hearts. Matthew 5, 28. To the man that looks upon a woman to what? Lust after her. That's the spirit of the law. Has already broken which commandment? In his heart. That's the spirit of the law. The knife he handed Abraham was an outward symbol of the inward covenant. So when he cut it off, dear friends, brothers and sisters, circumcision cannot be done halfway come on somebody say amen nobody say amen. no you can't circumcise halfway can you what a mess 
It's all our God's trying to teach us something. He gave something, the heart, half, no good. He gave Abraham instruction, circumcision, and that has to be all or nothing. Now, Romans 2, 28, 29. Romans 2, 28 tells you what a spiritual Jew ain't. Romans 2, 29 tells you what a spiritual Jew is. And you've got to be 29 and not 28. 28 says, circumcision of the what? I'm going to kind of paraphrase and flip it backwards. Circumcision of the flesh, what? Profits nothing. Nothing. You circumcised, so what? Well, God required it. Dear friends, He required the heart. This was only a sign. This was the real deal. Baptism, you were baptized. Remember Nicodemus, John 3, 5, and 6? He had a baptism of the water, but not of the Spirit. He had the letter of the law, but not the Spirit. So Nicodemus, was he circumcised? Sure. Was he baptized? Yeah. Was he born again? No. His heart was not changed. So uh, Romans 2.28, circumcision profits what? Nothing. He that is the Jew outwardly means I'm a seven-day Adventist. I wear a dress. I eat vegetables, and you're going straight to hell. <laughs> so what? It's got to be inward. Now, verse 29. Circumcision of the what? Heart. Now, I'm not saying those things are foolishness. It's good to be a whole food plant-based person, right? If you're a woman, you can save your breast. If you're a man, you can save your prostate. It's good to be a health I don't want to use that word reformer. It's got such a bad context now. To be a healthy person. By the way, vegan. You can, eat, you can drink beer and eat donuts and, and uh, Oreos all day long. That's vegan. Vegan doesn't cut the mustard anymore, right? Whole food plant-based, right? The way God made it. Let me just say something about Dean Ornish. Let me name some, pre- Let me name some men. Let me name some men. George Bush, Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Barack Obama. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, who am I naming? Presidents. Let me name some men. Dean Ornish, Michael Clapper, Michael Greger. Who am I naming? Health advocates, not health adventists, health advocates. Now, probably the cutting edge, the pretty cutting edge health reformer today, probably in the world, is Dean Ornish, right? Dean Ornish. Or uh, maybe Michael Greger, those, those guys. Michael Greger will tell you when you were still a monkey. Dean Orange will say, if you want to have the whole health package, and he's got our package, except for the last part, trusting God, he will say, what you need is some, that's not what you need. I'm saying they got the message, but not the meat. Christ is not in their message. We've got the message, and we got the Christ. We got the full package. We have a light that they don't have. Arise and shine. We have the light. But do we shine? That's the question. Abraham did. Now, that's where I'm going. The shining of Abraham. That's what the Bible's all about. So Romans 2.29, circumcision of the heart. That's what God wants. He wants a Jew that is a Jew. Where? Yeah, in the heart. Inwardly, in the heart. In the heart, yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's how it was working, right? Now, you go over to uh, John chapter 8, verse 39. Abraham, one of my favorite characters in the Bible, Abraham. In John 8, verse 39, uh, there's a dispute, who the, you know, who's your father and who's this and who's that. And, uh, and the subject rolls around to Abraham. We be the children of Abraham. We be the children of Abraham. <laughs> you know, we be the children of Abraham. And Jesus said in John 8, 39, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the what? Last part of the verse. Works of Abraham. Verse 40, you're trying to kill me, and Abraham would never do that. Right? You're trying to kill me. Abraham would never do that. Therefore, you are not the children of Abraham. You may be in his genealogy, you can trace him back, so what? You may be circumcised and baptized, big deal. You're trying to kill me. 
you got no place at the table in Matthew 8.11. you got a place waiting in the lake of fire. That's the reality of the gospel. It has to be on the inside. And what keeps it on the inside is when we look at those around us. The first commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart. You're so 22, 27, 28, 29 of Matthew. And the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to keep it on the inside, when you look at people, you got to look where? On the... When Jesus looked at people, did he look on the inside or the outside? Matthew 13, verse 15, I've given you in the... Mm, the Lord, what did he tell Samuel? I thank you, just reminding you of something. What did the Lord tell Samuel when he, had, he gave Samuel a health lecture? There's Eliab, he's a good-looking man. He's tall, he's broad-shouldered, he's a good-looking man. Got a full head of black hair, he's a good-looking man. He'd be a good king. And Samuel said, what? Is, that, is, is the Lord speaking to me? What did God tell Samuel? I don't see like... You look on the... But I look upon the... If you want to have heart religion, you got to focus on people's hearts and on yours. That is heart religion. Now, Abraham, go back to Genesis 12, verse 2. Back to Genesis 12, verse 2. Now, if, well, I, the Lord said it, if you, the children of Abraham will do the works of Abraham. Like father, they chip off the old block. That's just the, thing, the principle. Now, Abraham had like an overshadowing uh, characteristic. Abraham was marked with a certain characteristic. God mentions it often. Genesis 12, 2. I will make you a... There's something better than being a great nation. A great last part of the verse. And you shall be a blessing. A great nation too. But you'll be a blessing. Next question. A blessing in the church or outside? Both. Because when God had Abraham put his hiking boots on and take off, where was he walking? Canaan. Who was in Canaan? Abimelech, king of Shechem. Bunch of heathens and pagans. Not one Christian in the whole place. And that's the place Abraham walked into. And when Abraham would leave Abimelech, he would leave Shechem. He would, he's hanging out near Sodom. When Abraham would walk past, when he left, the people said, he's a what? That's what they said. He was the rising and shining. They said, that man was a blessing. The question is, are we? And I don't mean inside the church. I mean where? Outside. I was in one of my favorite places, Jamaica. This is like six years ago. Pastor Milton Gregory. At that time, was the uh, vice president for health of the West Indies Union. It's where they had the Jamaican Union. He invited me to come down there to do health things. And I was there. We went to the market to buy some bananas and some ackee and all that good stuff they have down there. Oh, yeah, and jackfruit and all. Yeah, it was good. And asbury and all. Yeah, good stuff. I got out, you know, and to the market. There is a dirty place, right? A dirty place and dirty market and this dirty Rasta guy's. And I smell something. <laughs> and I said, Pastor Gregory? He looked at me and said, yeah. I said, huh, those dirty Rasta guys are smoking dirty weed. They call it, of course, ganja, right? Part of their religion. Now, the test for me, this whole thing, yeah, you're, you're you know, the, the test for me, can I walk up to the Rasta man smoking that big stick of ganja and win him to Christ? with the health message. Isn't that the test? That's it. And if I look down my long white nose and have some kind of spirit of superiority, as the Pharisees did, can that Rasta man, that Rastafarian, can he sense that? And does it shut the gospel down in its tracks? Yes. Yes. The most deadly poison in this world, I can give you 50 Bible verses, is self what? Righteousness. And Abraham was not. He was the polar opposite. That's what we've got to have. We've got to have a heart like Abraham. Now, I've got nine, ten minutes left. 
a heart like Abraham, which means you've got to be a, a child of Abraham. You've got to have his spiritual inheritance. Now, the good news and the bad news. You want the good news or the bad news first? The good No, 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 come on. No, 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 come on. No, no, no. My friend from Virginia, I've got to overrule you this time. Good news or the bad news first? Don't say anything. Bad news. I always want the bad news first. The bad news is, you're on the, where you're on the, and they said this a lot in Southeast Asia. Oh, I was born a seven-day Adventist. <laughs> no, you weren't. You weren't born sweet. <laughs> the people love Cal Thrash here. I got to be careful, right? <laughs> and they love your parents. Let me tell you my uh, Calvin Thrash story, your dad. I was a brand new, now I would, yeah, I'll use him as my example, Calvin Thrash, the father. I just cut off my hair. I was the Rasta version. I just took out my big cross. I cut my hair. I stopped smoking ganja. And I came to Wildwood. Looked like a seven-day Adventist on the outside, right? <laughs> I did. Come on, I did. You never know, right? You think he's just a normal person. Sat down there with the other seven-day Adventist. Calvin Thrash, the dad, Dr. Thrash, was the chairman of the board back then, 1994, whatever. Chairman of the board at Wildwood. I didn't know who he was. He got up here in the pulpit. He was giving a sermon that day. It was a constituency weekend. Your dad gave a sermon. He stood up there. I, thought, I wonder who that dude is. You know, back then, we used to talk a certain way. Peace and salutations to all the world. Hippie group. He had a side eyes up. Peace, baby. You know, that's kind of the hippie lingo. Where's that girl with the dad that had that kind of, you know? She said, I reminded her of her father as he was strolling through the pot patch. And there he was. And you know what he said? I'm sitting there, you know, just right out of Babylon. Maybe I still got some Babylon in me. Right out of Babylon, I'm sitting here in the church looking at this guy. And he, he got up. You know what his subject was? The first five minutes, two meals a day. Anyway, two meals a day. What was he talking about? <laughs> I used to eat nine meals a day. <laughs> two meals a day. And this is what he said. He said, some of us need two. Some of us need three. And he stood back. And he said, stand straight and try to look at your shoes. If you can't see your shoes, you might consider two meals a day. No, he stood back, he looked down, and he looked at us and he said, I can't see my shoes. <laughs> was that man drawing me to Christ? Was he using the health message? Yes. Pretty simple, huh? And so I was in uh, coming back from Korea. You know, the cheap flight, you get there, you get in LAX at 10 o'clock in the morning, you leave LAX 10 o'clock the next morning. <laughs> That's the really cheap flight. So you stay in the hotel called the LAX floor, right? And I'll tell you, friends, from experience, anybody ever been in the LAX airport here? Many have, right? There's not a carpet in the whole airport. Because they know people will sleep on them. They don't have any carpets. Not one. That means sleeping on a tile floor. And we had a lifestyle guest there. I knew in L.A. And Dar he called Darlene. Darlene said, he's coming in. He'll be landing in LAX. be there for a day. His name was Ricky. And uh, I got some kind of email. And Ricky said, we're going to my mom and I'll pick you up. And we want to just visit with you a little while. I said, well, great, Ricky. So I got in. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. And they met me. And his, her the, uh, mom's name was Cleo. They were South Korean. Nice folks. And they took me out to something called a soup kitchen. It's like a chain of vegetarian-type restaurants. And they had a vegetarian thing as far from here back to the camera. I hadn't eaten in a day and a half. And it was all you could eat. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. <laughs> I looked at that thing. I said, well, I'm good. And so I filled up. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I tell you, I'm dealing with failure. But I was starving. I ate, I ate enough food for probably five men. And then when it was over, I said, first, praise the Lord. And I said, thank you. So we, uh, we, had a nice, we had a nice fellowship. We're going back to the hotel, I mean, the airport. And we hit the big sign there. It says LAX that way and something downtown, whatever, that way. And I remember looking at it. And she went that way. And I thought, she missed a turn. But she lived there. And she pulled into the uh, Econo Lodge or something, the Days Inn. Turned around. Went to her pocketbook. She said, here's the little slot, the key for the door, room 111. 24-hour airport shuttle. You got it? 
I went in, door open, king size bed. I laid down on that big bed. <sighs> Couldn't sleep, jet lag. Got up, got my computer out. Dear Sister Cleo, you are a daughter of I put Abraham. She knew what that meant. Yeah, same thing. She knew that. You're a daughter of Abraham. You have been a blessing. And dear friends, it was not the hotel. It was the thought in her mind to even do that. Would you agree? It's not the hotel bed. Who cares about a hotel bed? It was the thought that she would do something like that. God had her mind and her heart, and it came out as a blessing. And that's what we need this morning. Now, I'd like to sing in closing. I'm looking for a volunteer. Maybe Cal can play it and sing it too. I don't know. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Is it, no? Yep, yeah. You're up for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Come by. Or somebody can sing it and help. I don't know if Cal is going to try. Okay, all right. Who's going to help us? Come on, you, you reluctant seven day Adventists and visitors. I know some. There she comes again. Yes, yes. Ah, more. Three's great, four's better. <laughs> Roy and Kirsten. Yeah. Hey. Come on, we stand. This is this is our, our soap this morning, all wrapped up in this one song. Second Corinthians four, six, and seven. If you know it. Mm, plug on 892 if you know it. <clears throat> For God is the man of the life. pray uh, our father in heaven put your spirit in us today help us to be sons of abraham i ask it in jesus name amen